10 years since CRISPR, and I'm so curious about the next 10. How is gene editing technology going to impact our lives over the next decade? Well, thanks for inviting us back or inviting me back, Emily, great to be here. The next 10 years of CRISPR, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's very exciting to think what's ahead. Clearly, we're seeing a lot of advances right now in clinical medicine, in diagnostics, and I think increasingly in, we're going to see opening uh, doors opening in agriculture and synthetic biology as well. I'm very excited about the ways that genome editing is going to intersect with, with computer science and artificial intelligence in ways that are uh, hard to imagine. So I think increasingly in 10 years, we'll see CRISPR woven into many aspects of our, of our daily lives. Marty, Jennifer's expertise is obviously unparalleled. How do you hope having her on board will help guide and inform your investment decisions? Well, Emily, at Sixth Street, we've been very successful in the past in our uh, thematic investing. So, and a theme would not be long, short equity. A theme would be the convergence of healthcare and data. And to be a credible partner and to take full advantage of the flexibility that our investors give us with their capital, we need deep expertise in the field. And that's going to make us better investors as well as better partners to the management team. And so with Dr. Doudna's uh, unparalleled expertise, um, this is a magnificent uh, golden age of biology that is dawning and we're thrilled to be collaborating with her. So, Jennifer, what does the commercialization of CRISPR look like to you? What sort of business company investment opportunities do you see that have potential? It's interesting, Emily. I think the technology today is at a point where its, it's demonstrated potential is, is vast. And we're poised at a time when increasingly we'll see opportunities for real-world applications of CRISPR. And I think it's incredibly important to make that possible with appropriate investment. Couldn't imagine a better uh, partner than Sixth Street. This is a firm with deep expertise in the financial world. They've done uh, a lot of um, investing over the years in different aspects of healthcare writ large. And with Marty's expertise in computer science and data analysis, it's gonna be a, a really exciting opportunity to make sure that opportunities that have to do with genetics and, and genome editing are appropriately capitalized. You use that word appropriate and, you know, as we've discussed, there are major ethical concerns about how gene editing technology can be used for better or for worse. How are your views evolving on the appropriate use of the technology? Is it okay to use it to choose the cover, color of your baby's eyes, for example, or simply to eliminate genetic disease from your genetic line. As you know, Emily, I've been involved for several years in the global discussion around the ethics of CRISPR. I think that's incredibly important as the technology advances. Right now, there are so many opportunities that frankly don't involve any of the things that you just said that um, I think we're gonna have plenty on our plates. And in the meantime, it's just important that the, the global scientific community continue to, to work on appropriate transparency as the, as the technology advances. So Marty, given that you run healthcare and tech initiatives, what are the opportunities that you see? Um, what are you most excited about in terms of the implementation of this technology? Well, Emily, fundamentally what drew Jennifer and us together is a shared vision. Uh, in one of our early conversations, uh, I remember back over the summer and in the fall, uh, Jennifer and I just got incredibly excited about this convergence of computer science and biology. I feel like I've been waiting for this all my life. I, I majored in biochemistry because the <laughs> professor told me that the future of biology was computational. I worked on artificial intelligence and medicine 30 years ago. The computers just weren't fast enough but now they are fast enough and we have enough data to build high fidelity digital twins in software that accelerate the process of scientific discovery. And I think that intersection is what, what got Jennifer and Sixth Street excited to, to bring her expertise in the science and the bioethics and our flexible capital 
put them together to make people actually better, make CRISPR a reality in people's lives and in their health. Marty, the lack of diligence around Theranos and the proclamations of Elizabeth Holmes has sort of captured the fascination of the world. And I wonder how that's impacted the, the, the scientific investing community. And if, if, if you think investment firms like yours need more people like Jennifer Doudna, folks with educational backgrounds and academic backgrounds like your own to make these kinds of decisions. Well, certainly um, there, there are many things that went wrong in other companies, um, but we just keep our focus on, on ourselves and our knitting. And one thing that's worked for us, as I mentioned, is thematic investing, a deep and rigorous underwriting process, as well as deep partnerships with the domain experts. There's no substitute for that in the due diligence and in the partnering with the management team. Um, it all leads to a virtuous cycle of uh, better returns for our investors and making people better, bringing the science and translating it into better healthcare outcomes. Jennifer, of course, you've also been a pioneer in mRNA technology that's powered our COVID vaccines. And I'm curious where your thoughts are on the pandemic now as this drags on. Do you think we can really prevent the next pandemic before it happens? Or is this a cycle we're gonna see over and over again over the course of history? Well, there's no doubt there are a lot of lessons learned in the current situation. I certainly hope we can, if not completely prevent the next pandemic, at least uh, be better prepared than we clearly were for this one. Honestly, you know, the combination of innovation, uh, investment in fundamental science that went on over decades to bring about the mRNA vaccines that many have benefited from is a wonderful example of how science steps up. And I just think we need to continue to invest in that kind of fundamental innovative work that's going to prepare us for the future, whatever it brings.